Hello viewers, uh, we'll be taking a look at, at um, on Twist Reviews today, we'll be taking a look at uh, Peppermint OS 2, which is a cloud or web-based uh, operating system based uh, upon uh, Lubuntu or Ubuntu. Uh, throughout this uh, presentation, I'll be referring it to as being based on Ubuntu, which is what it fundamentally is. I'm yet to have a really good play, so you're really going to have a look at it through the new user's eyes, I suppose. Uh, I know a few little bits and pieces about it, because I was in the desktop just a few moments bef before, but uh, without any... Further ado, I guess we'll have a look at it. I'm running it in a virtual machine, and I've also installed the XL drivers for VirtualBox, so we should see some nice 1920 by 1080 action. So of course it comes up in a little minimised screen there. Uh, we won't be trying it uh, from the live disk. We're we'll booting from the first hard drive. There we go. So you can see the typical um, grub that it loaded there. This will just take a moment or two to load. It's running um, LXDE. I noticed that it's running LXDE in there. At first I was uh, not sure what uh, desktop environment it was running, uh, simply because I don't really use much outside of uh, GNOME 2, GNOME 3 or KDE 4. So, but uh, yes, it's using LXDE, which is of course meant to be lightweight. So as you can see, the uh, VirtualBox has increased its um, resolution there. We'll just go to full screen on that one. And uh, just punch in the password, of course. It's interesting. It's okay, so it's gone to full screen mode. So as I said, you're going to be seeing this through the new user's eyes. Uh, I'll probably make some commentary in that sort of um, uh, in that sort of context. So you can see here, it's got a nice wallpaper, and it's got this nice uh, panel bar down below, which I saw before. It is using uh, NM Applet, though I really couldn't get it to show the information about NM Applet. I'm used to being able to now. Perhaps this is a versioning thing, but I used to be able to go right-click and, and see which version it was or is. Um, of course, VirtualBox is complaining that I'm using the internal guest editions that are provided by um, Ubuntu or Peppermint, uh, Peppermint Linux there. We can see we've got this nice um, uh, Mint uh, X-Metal type, uh, or Metal X, I think it's X-Metal uh, theme going on there. Um, this, I'm sure it's got to be derived from somewhere else because I'm sure I've seen this, um, this theme elsewhere, but the uh, icons, as you can see, are very, very nice. Look, I'm not going to go through all this sort of stuff here. I think you can go through that. The interest in not even on this, because I mean, let's face it, on other distros we get much more advanced features than these sort of simple things there. But of course, we've got the transmission. It seems to be transmission BitTorrent client there. I'll just have a load that up. Yes, it is. Of course, they give us that nice warning that you've got to abide by um, a copyright and all that sort of thing. Although I don't think they mention it in such terms. Um, so transmission there. I'm not going to even bother with that one. Just quit that. Um, Chromium web browser, that's a bit of an unusual inclusion. I've heard before that Ubuntu may be in including Chromium in future. Of course they include it in the rep rep uh, repositories, but uh, whether they'll include it uh, by default is, uh, is interesting um, in itself. But this distribution, which of course is based on Ubuntu, um, which you can see uh, if you want to have a look around, fiddle around, you'll see that it is. Um, Chromium web browser there, Dropbox, um, of course, Dropbox. I haven't really used Dropbox, so let's just run this up. Uh, once again, it's just through the new user's eyes. It's really a distro aimed at making cloud computing easy for users. Um, so it seems to be downloading that. So how about we move on to something else for a moment? Um, eBuddy IM client. Really not into that one. But let's have a go. Might load a bit slowly, of course, because we're um, already downloading something in the background there. What I liked about this uh, window manager here is, see, this is one limitation you don't see uh, in window decorations. Uh, nor well, this is one benefit that you don't see in window decorations normally is this highlighting. For that, uh, you can sometimes misclick or something like that. As you can see, it's loading up quite slowly there. So we'll give that a sec to load. Oh, of course, we can try and load up an account. I hope now that I've entered that in, I can actually just click on this and it will return. No, it won't. So in we go again, typing it away. And of course, I don't want it to remember that. 
there's no need to. So let's see how crash hot this is, how good it is. Seems to have come up as a as a full application. Now there's no um, mystery in how it does this. I just found out before how, how it's doing the, all this this sort of stuff. If you go into uh, now, I went into which one did I go into before? That was something before Office. That's right. I went to Google Docs before. Um, now how did I find out what was going on there? I added this to the desktop. And I went to pro uh, no, I didn't open it with properties because that's no good. It doesn't tell you the information. It's a shortcut. It doesn't really tell you enough information to get an idea of what's going on there. So what I went and did was I opened it in the text editor, and you can see how it's achieving this. So it's really very unfascinating, I guess you could say, after you read this. So it's just telling Chromium, it's calling Chromium browser, and it seems to be with this little switch here, treating it like an application, treating this uh, link as an application. So you don't really see Chromium all over the place. You just see, see that now. Dropbox. I don't have a Dropbox account. Okay, well let's try this. So it's coming up as like a, a, an application, uh, free. Okay, well we'll go the free option. We'll go. Okay. Okay. Fair enough. Well, I don't know much about about this, so we'll just go with the default options. Okay. Um. Oh, I don't really know what to make make about this, but let's go and continue on and look at this tour. We can maximise it, I suppose. No, can't maximise it. Dropbox. Okay, okay, I get the idea. Yeah, so look, it's a little bit different on here because I'm not using it under Ubuntu. I'm, and uh, oh, here we go. Could not grab your mouse. Oh, that's nasty, isn't it? Okay, so I'm clearly on uh, Google Talk there, but there's not many, there aren't many people logged on, so we won't bother with that. I think that's pretty self-explanatory. There's a couple, there's an ad in the corner there, which is a bit of a shame. Dropbox error. What did I get there? Look, I'm not even going to bother with that. Now that I've got that bug, uh, that error there. Um, six ad. Okay. Fair enough. Well, it seems to me that I can do the whole sharing file, well, not sharing files, but uh, storing files in the cloud, so to speak. Let's have a look at some random media player. Look, to be honest, I'm not finding that I'm particularly enamoured with this. Um, you know, I like being able to open an application and it does exactly what I want. Um, if I want to store something, look, I've, I've worked at ways around uh, storing things. If I want to, I know it sounds inefficient, but if I want to store something, um, you know, uh, in the cloud, I can store it um, on a service like SkyDrive, which you can store documents on, or you can even email it to yourself. I'm not, uh, this is just Google M Player, so I'm not, uh, sorry, not Google M Player, no M Player there. Um, I'm not really that <laughs> last FM. Let's have a look. Of course, once again, it came up with a Chromium web browser. Last FM. I'm not really, you know, once again, I'm going to have to start a profile and listen to music online. Why would I even bother doing that if I can go to my local um, radio station uh, online and listen without logging in? These are the things I start to wonder with this. I mean, I'm not against cloud computing to speak. In fact, I wrote about it in my dissertation, my honours dissertation, and the benefits and, and drawbacks thereof. Um, also, sound mixer, that's unimpressive. You don't need to worry about that too much. Cloud player, okay. Let's have a look. One thing I'm noticing too is I'm waiting for for app, web applications to load. I'm waiting for it, I'm waiting for it, I'm waiting for it. And that's, I mean, my connection's not terribly slow. It's 1.5 megabits per second. I mean, compared to Americans and 
and uh, the Brits, that probably is fairly slow. And now I could listen to a bunch of music. This seems to be a lot more friendly. I can listen to these hot tracks, it seems. So we won't bother with that at the moment. That That's a positive. I think that's a positive. I can sit there and, and have a look at those things there. You know, this is the first time I've used Peppermint Linux. Uh, Peppermint Linux. Um, it seems I'm going to have to learn about these things. These are the typical Ubuntu things that you're going to see here. Additional drivers, disk utilities, Synaptic Package Manager. Although they've dropped the Synaptic, I think, now, have they? Maybe not, but they, they're using the, um, uh, the software center as the primary means to install and update software, I believe. There's an update manager there. Windows wireless drivers. I don't use Windows wireless drivers. I try and avoid that sort of thing. So, but I think there'll be N, uh, NDIS wrapper, something like that. Yeah, you're, you're mucking around. Yeah, oh, there we go. NDIS wrapper. There we go. So I was looking away when I was thinking about that uh, name. Yeah. So look, in the end, uh, you know, I think we should, uh, without further any further um, progression in into this distro. It's as I said, I'm new to it. Uh, give you my first impression. Now let's m bear in mind that it is just a first impression. Uh, I'm not f totally familiar with cloud computing, and uh, and well, I'm familiar to the extent that I can, you know, sure I can go. Let's go to, um, you know, Google Documents. But I do this anyway through a web browser. It, all it's doing is hiding. In the end, I'm very unimpressed. In the end, because all it is is hiding the web browsing side of things. Uh, to me, it's. Um, it's hiding the fact that this is Chrome, uh, that it's Chrome, um, or Google Chromium. So, no, in the end, yeah, I think we should just go and, uh, and do the, rate this thing. Okay, so we're going to uh, score Peppermint OS 2. I guess I called it Peppermint Linux before, but uh, after looking around for a bit, um, yeah, I guess I felt that... Um, yeah, I should probably call it by its uh, distro, the name that they're calling it on DistroWatch. Anyway, I uh, usually rate on responsiveness, stability. Uh, it was package currency before in the major review. Uh, major review. Um, however, um, yeah, I've chosen package selection. For example, if I was talking about ca package currency and I rated Debian, I felt that, you know, of course Debian is based, it's um, strongly associated with stability uh, and reliability, so therefore packages which are heavily patched are not going to be current. Um, so package selection, I think, is a better better option there. Attractiveness and user friendliness, and uh, overall, I then give a uh, an overall score. So responsiveness, yes. Um, well, I gave it an eighty percent because. Uh, while it was responsive just like Ubuntu would be, when you actually started getting into the web applications, well, it uh, you know I've got a 1.5 megabits per second connection, which isn't the fastest in the world by any means, but it's uh, it's also not terribly slow compared to some people's connections, uh, and I felt that uh, the the speed of the web applications was really lacking there. And of course, you know, uh, I am rating it. Uh, uh, based on what it can provide me specifically rather than any particular other person. Of course, if I'm sitting on a, a one gig, gig connection or something, which is not possible, I guess, at the moment for uh, internet, but, you know, I think the average is about 12 megabits per second out there. You know, if I was sitting on 12 megabits per second, yeah, it's going to be it's going to be faster, but in the end, I felt responsiveness was lacking there a little bit compared to um, previous distributions that I've rated, um, or major for that matter. Um, stability, uh, of course, it was stable, except for that little Dropbox issue. So, um, and Dropbox is included by default, so therefore I had to rate it like that. It's not like I surfed the web page and then added Dropbox in and then something went wrong. It just had a fault in there. Um, so, you know, it only loses 5% for that, so big deal. Overall, it was stable. It did what it said it was going to do. Um, package selection, 80%. I would have liked to have seen some more um, uh, desktop applications. I know it's focused on the web, um, on the web and the cloud, um, but let's face it, without an internet connection, this uh, operating system is going to be pretty useless to me, except for maybe looking at man pages and uh, maybe using the calculator. So and, and a bit of media and stuff like that. So yeah, essentially as it is, as it stands. I mean, sure, I can add other applications if I wanted, but let's face it: these uh, links that they're using are not going to use a huge, um, you know, they're not going to have a huge footprint on um, 
on the size of the ISO that they're delivering. And that's true. I mean, the ISO is relatively small compared to others. I think it was about 450 or 500 uh, meg or something like that compared to what I'm thinking is 650, 700, even you know, a little bit more than that uh, before you have to go to a DVD. So, um, yeah, you know, that's, uh, I guess, personal, uh, personal preference was that uh, package selection uh, wasn't so great. I mean, how objective can I be? I'm not sure. Attractiveness. Look, it had a nice wallpaper. Yes, it used LXDE, which was blinged up to make it look good, but was it attractive? Well, not compared to Major, in my opinion, and not compared to other distros like uh, OpenSUSE, um, you know, and Ubuntu itself. I didn't really feel it was that att attractive. Um, it even had, uh, and I'll show you that in a second, um, I'll just show you that here, actually. It had a, uh, a theme that, uh, you know, in the... Uh, Installer that I wouldn't have used, which is the Rayleigh theme, is the default gnome theme. It's ugly as, so I, I don't mean to be mean or anything like that, but uh, it doesn't seem like the installer had um, much bling to it at all, if any. And uh, I didn't find that, uh, I mean, having a nice wallpaper, every distro should have a nice wallpaper. That shouldn't be an optional. So, um, oh, you know, in saying, you know, any desktop distro, I should say, and any uh, distro that's going to be used as a, um, a workstation. Obviously, in the command line, you're not going to have an attractive background unless you're using OpenSUSE, which, bizarrely enough, even in the command line has an, an attractive background. But anyway, that's another story. Uh, user friendliness. I didn't think it was that user friendly. Um, uh, that's why it gets a 65% here. How can I quantify that? Well, let's face it. When I used the web applications, I had to sign up for this and that. There were no demos. Um, it uh, left me wondering what to do. When I have when I install Ubuntu by default, I don't wonder what to do. It's not because I've used Ubuntu. It's, it's simply because of the paradigms. It, it's following uh, there. It seems to that you know the applications are, are, are clearly visible. Um, it um, I, I guess it comes down to uh, it's, there's no question about what to do. Um, I was left wondering what to do. Uh, the menu system is nice enough. I mean, it gives you some uh, you know you've got graphics, media. Um, office, uh, internet, all that sort of stuff. But in the end, I just didn't find that I uh, found it, I didn't find it user friendly. I guess that's what it comes down to. So overall, I give this distro, look, a 78%. And I really wonder, actually, if I've been a little bit too generous. It's a respin of Ubuntu, and Ubuntu has a very strong base uh, in, in Debian. I think they could have done better. I really do. And, uh, you know, let's face it too. Um, if you can fill up a, um, a CD with useful software, then do it. It doesn't matter that it's a web-based web um, operating system. You can add these other things in as extras. If you want to have a secondary menu for, um, for uh, you know, standalone software, then do that even. But don't just omit it. I, I think that's, uh, you know, I don't want to be um, malicious or, um, or even malign this distro. I think uh, 78 is generous. Um, but in, in the end, would I recommend it to someone? Hmm. Not at 78%. To me, it's really starting to get on that borderline of, well, I'm not going to recommend it. So, it's not damn right lousy, but it's not uh, g genius work either. So, uh, in the end, yep, a 78%, and I think that's fair. Please leave your comments, uh, and remember, of course, um, to subscribe and vote. Thanks, guys.